I think a good rule to remember is that when a person or a group or an organization does something that is perceived by someone else as bad or incorrect, then the person that has suffered that supposed injustice is very quick, they're incentivized to speak out against that group, to make a blog post, to talk badly in a public place, to try and just voice their concerns. But on the other hand, when someone or a group or an organization does something good and goes above and beyond and really just changes things in a good way, then there is no incentive for someone to leave a positive review or to talk highly of that group to a larger audience. And I think that's a big problem. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, AKA Dr. Calcagno, and I am currently a first year family medicine resident, but I am recently a graduate of McMaster University's medical school at their Niagara regional campus. So I wanna make one thing very, very clear on the onset of this video before we go any further. I am currently a resident that works with McMaster. I'm a former student, but there is no incentive for you to make this video at all. No one's paying me, no one told me to do this. I'm just a former student that is now looking to share my experiences and help expand the community a little bit and share with students that might be coming into the program, that want to apply to the program in the future, or that are just members of the general public. Because I know that when I first applied to McMaster Medical School three years ago, three and a half years ago at this point, uh, when applications were due, McMaster was my number one choice. And there were so many reasons why. And then when, when I was accepted, I was very, very happy about it. Personally, I really liked the three-year medical school idea versus the four-year medical school. I was a big fan, at least in concept, of the PBL style of learning, and what we'll talk about that in a little bit and also early clinical experiences and just the feeling of the school to me was a place that I wanted to be at first but then because I didn't have anyone in the medical field the first thing I did as an incoming student was look online and research what other students thought about the program as they made their way through and I saw right away that there were a few concerns that people had raised about the program after having made it through or I heard from a friend of a friend and it's very difficult to find reliable information when you're in that position. So I'm hoping this video helps a little bit. The first thing we're going to do really quickly is kind of just give you an overview of what the program was like. And then I'll talk about some things that I really liked about the program. And then some things that I think fairly the program could improve on a little bit because no one's perfect. Let's be honest here. Um, and why overall I was a fan of the program and I'll give it a, a letter grade just uh, in, in reciprocity and in fairness. If they're gonna give us grades, I feel like it might be a good idea for me to grade them back at some point. So McMaster Medical School, for the most part where I went, is divided up the exact same way as every other medical school. There is pre-clerkship and then there's clerkship. And normally at the majority of schools in North America, the program will run for four years because we all have to do at least being enrolled in a bachelor's of something at a university level first, and then you go to medical school and it's a four-year program. But McMaster, and Calgary is another one in Canada. It's a three-year program instead of the four-year program. And the way that they accomplish this is by minimizing breaks, especially summer break in the first two years, while other schools will have a formal summer break. McMaster students just get a few weeks spaced out throughout the year. I think we still actually do get a week in a bit in the summertime off. But I found that the three-year program, it didn't feel rushed to me. I felt like if anything, it enhanced my learning. This is my own personal opinion. It didn't give me time off in the summer to forget about the things that I just learned in the last year. And it made me feel like I wasn't just learning things so that I could pass a test, but that I was learning things because the course was escalating and because I was walking towards the path of being a practicing physician eventually. And the things that I learned were clinically important and relevant and things that I needed to remember. So pre-clerkship is divided up into four different MFs or medical foundations foundations and then there's one IF or integration foundation that comes afterwards and the different MFs between the four the very first one and I have them all pulled up here just so I don't forget the order um, but it's introduction to medicine and then respirology and pulmonology and then also cardiology and that whole uh, everything about the heart that all shows up in our first MF and MF2 we move on to renal and hematology MF3 was GI nutrition endocrinology and reproduction MF4 was MSK, so, so muscles and bones, as well as uh, neuroscience and brain and behavior. And then in the integration foundation, that's where we had a formal kind of structured program that was supposed to help us get ready for clerkship and different practical skills that we needed for the hospital, how to interpret different labs and radiographs and all different things. And I found that the pre-clerkship component was actually really strong. I felt pretty prepared from the get-go going into my first clinical setting. And in addition to everything that we learned in like the classroom and online because of everything that happened, um, we had very, very early clinical experiences. My very first time in a family medicine practice with McMaster was I think in the first month. 
within the first month or two months at the most, I was seeing my first patient for the first time, conducting that, that patient interview and, and helping out in a family medicine office. And then some people are saying, yeah, but that's family medicine specifically, what if I'm not going into that? I was also doing horizontal electives and my first two electives were in general surgery actually. So I was in the OR for the first time after like a month and a half. Now we'll cut it off right here for a second because I wanna introduce a pro tip for any students coming into McMaster. I know there's a lot of talk about what the, there are three campuses and there's a lot of talk about what the best campus is. I will say that if you are an incoming student, my opinion is that you are best off at one of the regional campuses, one of the satellite campuses. I would say Niagara is the best one. That's a little bit personal bias in my own opinion. But I just know that because my group at one of the regional campuses was like 27 or 28 of us, um, very small number of people there. We had kind of first dibs at any elective that we wanted. If I wanted to do a general surgery elective, they scheduled it for me in like a week. Any research projects that I wanted to do, we had a research coordinator on site that was able to connect me with anyone that I wanted to get connected with. That was never a problem. And as a matter of fact, I had too many research projects going at one time. I could have done anything that I wanted and they were very helpful. And I think that the admin staff and everything at that regional site was so strong. Um, in addition to their, their own qualities, but because the class was so small. And when you're working with a smaller group of students instead of a larger group of students, you just get a lot more access to resources in the air. So I would definitely highly recommend a regional site if you are an incoming student. But now kind of to get back to the core curriculum and for the rest of this, I'm just gonna do off of memory. Please go ahead and check the website if you wanna learn more. But basically you come back from Integration Foundation, you do a few pre-clerkship electives and then you get started in clerkship and you do your mandatory clerkship rotations, which are different for every school. At McMaster, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, it was ortho and anesthesia at two weeks each. And then we did general surgery, OB, family medicine, psychiatry, pediatrics, internal medicine. And I think that was it for all of the mandatory clerkship rotations. If I'm wrong, I'll put them up on the screen. But then you also get access to your electives just like every other school. And it worked out pretty well for everyone, I would say. I thought that the clerkship rotations were well designed. There were exams following most of the, the rotations anyways, and making sure that we knew what we needed to know and evaluations, at least for me, were fair, and I have no complaints from the clerkship component. Okay, so now that we've gone over basically what the general program was like, I wanna get into some concerns, three different concerns, and my response as a student and what I thought about these different things. The first one was that with PBL, or problem-based learning, it doesn't actually cover the things that you need to cover, and that for that reason, sometimes students that come from a PBL program would not do well at one of the American exams, like the USMLE, for example. And my response to that is that PBL, and for those of you that don't know, the way the PBL works is we show up to a, like a tutorial, is what we call it. There is a case that was assigned to us. We read through the case. We highlight some questions or things that we wanna talk about with the group. Then we'll go in, we'll discuss it with our group and the tutor who is a, a, a doctor for the most part, or a staff member, someone that knows a lot about the case that we're reading up on. We'll come up with more questions, we'll go home, we'll research it, we'll break everything down, the disease, the pathophysiology, everything about it, and then we'll go back in and we'll talk about it again in a separate session. So in this way, PBL is designed in such a way that it forces you to come up with the questions itself. It's not a formal lecture, it's a case, and you have to decide what it is the case is trying to teach you and anything else that you want to learn about the case, and then you have to teach yourself using a whole bunch of different resources, up to date, and osmosis and whatever else people use but then you have an actual staff member that is there to make sure that the things that you learned aren't just incorrect everything that you learn on your own you will come back and talk about and they will tell you whether or not you were totally off on a particular topic or if yes you covered all of the learning objectives now what i will say is that as a student that's been through the pbl program myself if you're the type of person that cannot take that initiative themselves then you will not like the PBL style of learning. As someone that came from a school that was very didactic and, and lecture-based in undergrad, I found the transition very difficult at first. And that was because I wasn't used to it at all. I didn't know how to dissect things and, and get certain things out of it without just being taught and spoon-fed all the information. And I will say that personally, I do like didactic style of learning. I like lectures. I like having a list of things to, to memorize but there's no reason why you can't have that in addition to PBL. And I think that PBL worked out very, very well 
and it gave me the skills to then after go out on my own and tackle whatever it is that I wanted to do. And some of you know that I, I just wrote the step one and the step two. And to be honest with you, I, I wrote the exams during a time where I was very busy applying to residency. And because of my training with PBL, I was able to identify, I feel like it, it shaped me into a learner that is now able to identify the things that I suck at and the things that I need to learn more of, make a list and seek out resources and learn them on my own time. And that's why I was successful on the exams. And I think that it's very hard to refute that McMaster's program can't prepare you for independent learning because I think that I was able to do just fine. And it is true that there are certain areas of the, of the American system that we didn't cover, many areas of the American system that we didn't cover for anyone looking to write the USMLEs. But if you come from a PBL system, you should, if you've learned about it properly, be able to identify your weaknesses and then seek out the appropriate resources to cover and learn these different topics. So the next thing, is that supposedly McMaster students, they don't match. If you're not doing family medicine, then you're out of luck because you're not gonna match any competitive programs. What this is, is our 2022 Oath Ceremony Handbook. It has the names of every single student in my class and where they matched. And for confidentiality reasons, I'm not gonna show this up on the screen because a lot of people don't want uh, their, their names or their likeness on, on camera here. But what I will tell you is that the McMaster students from my year matched very, very well. I myself matched to my first choice in family medicine at the Niagara campus, because that's where I wanted to be. But we have everything here from two students that did cardiac surgery out of a very limited pool of cardiac surgery spaces this year, a whole bunch of people that did five-year eMERGE. We have uh, otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. We have plastic surgery. There is no discipline um, that McMaster students were unable to match to as a class. And some people didn't match their first choice specialty, unfortunately, because there are not enough spaces for everyone. But I will say that in speaking with many of my colleagues, um, they were nervous going into the match cycle, but they worked very, very hard. They did the electives that they had to do. They wrote all their um, research papers and applications and everything, and they matched for the most part. And I think that this thing about McMaster students not being able to match for some reason or the other, can very, very easily be disproven, at least from my particular match year. My friends did very, very well. And the last point of contention is that because it's a three-year program, it's just built into the nature that three-year programs are inferior to four-year programs, that after you will show up to your residency clueless and not knowing what's going on, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it with myself. I know that you know, the, just the nature of being a medical student and that transition from medical school to residency I, I just finished my first week of residency and you show up on your first day feeling a little bit like, wow, the stakes are higher now. It's a different playing field. There's a lot more responsibility placed on your shoulders. But personally, I don't know if an additional year of schooling could have made this transition any easier for me. I think that whenever you're a student moving to a resident role or eventually a resident moving to a staff role, they are bigger shoes that you have to fill. And as a result, there are some growing pains associated. Um, and I, you know, everyone's gonna be different on, on their own opinions with this. Personally, I, I thought that I was doing well on my different rotations. And when I showed up back in medical school and when I showed up to other hospitals, um, we did, I did a few in Etobicoke and, and one in Brampton, like when I was moving around with, with my electives. I didn't feel like I was out of place compared to the staff there and I didn't feel like I was inferior in any way. And now so I do feel very confident and prepared to begin my residency. I know that there's a lot of areas that I still need to improve on um, and a lot of studying that I need to do. But in my own opinion, I feel about as confident as I think that you could in this particular space. And I don't think confidence should be misconstrued with arrogance. I'm not arrogant going into this. There's a lot that needs to be covered. Um, but again, first year of residency and a lot of learning is still gonna happen. Now, one thing that I will say, cause they're not getting out of this scot-free with a, you know, straight positive review from me. There's always areas to improve. And I think with McMaster, the big area to improve is their anatomy program and a little bit of pharmacology as well. And I will say that as, a, as, a, as an average with some of the students that I've talked to, myself included, my anatomy 
was not where it needed to be coming out of my third year. I think that is an area that the school understands the need to work on. And I think there are some steps being taken, but I think that the majority of students that come out of McMaster's program, not knowing a level of anatomy that is comparable to many of the four-year programs is not because of the length of time that we're in school, but it's because of the fact that anatomy isn't a formally assessed part of the program in a way that if you fail a bell ringer, if you don't show up to anatomy tutorial, nothing really happens. There's no pressure on you to meet certain learning objectives when it comes to anatomy. It's not an area that is really, let's put it this way. I myself was a person that coming into medical school, I thought that every doctor coming out of medical school was going to know all the bones, all the muscles, all the nerves, how they all work together and things like that. And when I was studying for step one, I realized that that was really not the case. And I think a big part of that was because although the resources were all there, McMaster's anatomy lab, especially the one in Hamilton is amazing. It's state of the art. They make every effort to have all the resources available to you. There is no one pushing you to go to them. It is one of those things that, again, you have to take the initiative on yourself to seek out and learn. And I'm going to say brutally honestly about myself that I didn't take that initiative the way that I should have. And it was an error that I fell behind on. And when I came across that material when studying for the step one, I realized that it was an area that I needed help on. And I studied a lot of anatomy getting ready for that exam. And I feel a lot more confident now, but I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think that with students, the majority of students, myself included, it's part of our nature that we get so busy with so many other different things that there, if there is not a consequence of not doing something, an immediate consequence, it tends to fall behind in our schedule. So I personally would be of the opinion that when it comes to things like anatomy, there needs to be as well as a carrot to, you know, like, like come this way and yes, study anatomy because these are all the benefits. There needs to be a stick. There needs to be something behind you, especially in my opinion, saying if you don't learn anatomy, right? And um, that's what I got used to in undergrad. Um, the stressing of, of failing tests and exams pushed me to be better. And same with the step. I was so nervous about failing step. It was a challenge that I set for myself that I had no choice but to learn anatomy. And that's how I became a better doctor because of it. So now for the fun part, my final conclusion, my final grade, I am going to give McMaster Medical School, in my experience, an A minus. An A minus, I think is fair. I was a big fan of the program. I think it prepared me for a lifelong learning experience. I thought the resources were great. Staff at the regional campus, that's what I can't speak about, were amazing. They were very helpful. We had research projects and opportunities at every corner that I turned. The, the school was very supportive of anything that I really wanted to do. Um, from things like charitable fundraisers to anything else really. Um, but the anatomy curriculum could use a little bit of a restructure and, and maybe a formal look at how students on average are doing in anatomy coming out of the program and what needs to change about that. Um, who knows, maybe it was just me. Maybe I just sucked at anatomy and then doing step taught me anatomy and um, that's possible. But guys, that, that's it. That's it. Some of you had requested this video in the past. I hope that it was helpful. I, I shed some light to the best that I could. Um, if you are a new student going into the program, be excited because it is a great program. And to anyone thinking of applying, definitely apply in, in the future. Um, and maybe I'll see you around sometime. But other than that, if you have any comments, any questions, you could leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't liked the video already, I would greatly appreciate it. And we will see you all in the next one. So everyone take care.